So, who are you? Okay, I know you probably won't think about it anymore after all these talks about something as abstract as identity, something that is on the other side always there, you. We're watching this thing every day, hopefully, <laughs> but we do not even know what it is. That, that's definitely remarkable. And so instead of asking you who you are, I will tell you who I am. Um, as this is actually a quite self-referential -re event as we're talking about identity, I would like to talk the next 15 minutes about the three most important things in the world. What is actually me, I, and myself. <laughs> in case you get bored, just ask yourself, who am I? means, who are you? And um, then listening to me will may, might be a relief. So who is me, I, myself? I think I am what I do. I think I am what I did. I am all what I think. I am all what I have thought. I am my friends. I am my body. I am my beliefs. I am all my judgments, all my chances. I am my encounters, I am my fears, I am my self-control, and I am whatever my imagination allows me to be. So I am what my social environment, means you, <laughs> allows me to be. Being me and becoming me is for me an ongoing challenge, and so I, what I am right now is not yet decided. May I'm a princess, may I'm an employee, may I'm a philosopher, a poet. and then may, may I'm an alien, you never know. May I'm a Berlin city girl or an Offenbach city girl, maybe I'm a tree or a chocolate bar. Um, but I'll give you a hint, and um, because it's quite difficult to get. And I think I'm, I think for now I'm just a, a monster princess <laughs> uh, with magical power. And I think to prove that, I have something here. You know what that, that's a magic wand called like, um, in French, it's like baguette magic. But in German, it's Zauberstab. <laughs> so, um, and I will just like um, put a spell on you and turn you into your favorite Disney character. So, what's your favorite Disney character? Oh, I think a genie. Genie? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I <laughs> Just great. <laughs> <laughs> so again, well, it looks like a nice blue character. What about you? Oh, yeah. It's blue. Uh, it's my character. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> it's my favorite one, too. <laughs> the lazy beard. Chilling in the jungle. <laughs> um, so, okay, but serious again. Um, it's a serious monster princess talk going on, and um, and I have some like serious uh, topics to talk about in this castle-like museum in this tech city Offenbach. Um, and the serious talk topic is how is identity influenced by games? How do social games address your identity? And why is it more fun to be my farm than just being my boring blue white Facebook profile? Um, I already gave you a brief insight um, about what I think identity means. And for me, identity is an ongoing search. It's in search, um, it's in search to connect different parts of me, myself, and I um, to one identity, one constant over time. Um, and I find, like, I think it's, it's the search 
to like somehow find a constant or <laughs> might not find a constant. Sometimes it's just you see this 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 ongoing stream, and if you look back and see, oh, there was something I never s seen before, but it's actually something what what makes an entity in the end. So it's nothing what can be finished, or I can't tell you what I am, and you probably won't be able to tell me what you are. Um, but I like to smart a quite. Uh, to quote a smart, quite smart guy <laughs> called Wittgenstein. Um, that's he, he's one of the colleagues of Professor Metzinger. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, actually, there's nothing as senseless as talking about identity. And that's why, actually, if you just look at the word's meaning, it's... I. Being identical means being the same. Um, and from two things, he says, to say they are the same is just senseless. Because they never will. Two things never will be the same. So it's senseless, not to say bullshit, it's, it doesn't make sense. And from one thing to say it is the same with itself, that is just not necessary to say that. So for Wittgenstein, um, talking about identity is basically useless and it's all sentences are about identity are just like um, examples for completely useless sentences so we could just <laughs> go out and say okay <laughs> nothing learned but <laughs> um, I think that's um, quite interesting to have that in mind the identity it, can it always just be a, like a construct. So, um, yeah, here, forgot about it. That, yeah, okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, but now I come to the second point, what is playing? And um, playing means flow for me, like I think the flow concept is a translation of the feeling you get when you play a game. Um, playing means escaping from a reality, definitely. Playing means um, doing something, means doing something without, without a purpose. Doing it like um, just because you do it, actually. Just lose yourself by doing it. Um, you can see everything as a game, you could, but um, it, it is about doing something without a defined benefit. Means being involved intensively, forgetting about yourself while you play, and just be right now in the moment you do it. You can switch into roles. You are some someone else. If you play, that's why we use the word play. I play to be someone else. Like I act would be the German, uh, the English word for it as well, but I think playing refers to it quite good. Yeah, of course, we have all these colleagues, Platon, Aristoteles, Novalis, Schiller, Nietzsche, even Kant, what's quite remarkable, I think. <laughs> they all uh, thought about playing. Um, and we could have hear another talk about it and all their smart concepts. Um, but I think um, they have smart concepts and or concepts that refer playing as a higher form of being and playing as the only beauty there is and playing actually as the purpose of human being. That's quite interesting. As I read that Platon actually <laughs> thought that we are all like, um, yeah, we are just there to play. I was quite... Um, <laughs> That was quite surprising. But um, because actually he said we are all like play figures of God, and so we have to behave that, like that <laughs> um, and to fit, to fit the role. Um, but I think um, I want to talk about as well, like as we are here at a tech conference. Oh, I have to stay here. <laughs> so as we are here on a tech conference, I think you all know about the gamification topic. 
Um, that's quite popular. You see all, actually you could see even Facebook as a game. Who gets more likes? Who has more friends? You, you have all this game mechanics implemented there. And for example, Foursquare and recently Scavenger, what they actually try to, put, to bring these mechanics into a real life situation. But all these new services implement game elements and game mechanics to, um, yeah, to intensively um, involve us into their servers. Um, and maybe, yeah, to, to, to um, you could say, manipulate or just to drive our behavior in a certain direction. So that's quite interesting, and it's quite interesting to think about what game we're actually playing, because maybe we play always. Maybe, like, capitalism is just a big game about <laughs> the big, more cash count. Maybe that doesn't work, rational or not rational. Maybe that's referring to each other. And um, we can't, maybe a game mechanic is actually what we can get with our minds because it's easy and it's rational on one side, but it's emotional on the other side. So it's actually playing computer games, for example, is um, computer games is what you, what is, what comes out if mathematicians and artists together try to create experience. <laughs> so nearly impossible, but <laughs> works quite well. <laughs> um, yeah, here we see, here we see um, the evolution of actually um, games, computer games. These are only computer games. I'm not referring to Heat and Psych, but, uh, heat and psych, but this is the evolution you see, and um, that's why I make a long story, story short. I will stop talking about playing as a whole, I will come to social games. Um, what are social games, actually? Social games integrate social graph information. That means all what the data you put into Facebook, or maybe just your picture and your friends, um, and bring it into your gameplay, and bring it into the game design. So um, you play just little games with your real friends, against them, on a social network. And um, social games are a mega trend. Maybe you're not the right audience. I don't know. Who plays who played social games before? <laughs> I don't know. Just tried it, even if it was just a few minutes. <laughs> okay, I see many farms here. <laughs> um, um, it's um, actually. The revenue of social games in 2010 um, is exp was about a billion dollars. And social games haven't even existed as a product or as a service um, three years ago. Um, so yeah, Zynga was founded and it was three years ago. Now Zynga is worth as much as EA, what is the biggest gaming company. It's like five billion uh, dollars. Um, but now I will show you some examples how social games um, use identification mechanisms. Beside these characters and these emotions, you see, for example, here, this is, these are um, examples um, where you have, of course, the name, and you, you always have the name here. Can you hear me like this, or is it too? Yeah? Um, you have the name always showing up. I will come to another point and show another thing. Oh. Yeah, you have always, I'm like, they really talk to me, the games, like I'm into them. So that's just the beginning. This is like one example, like this is a brain test game and um, you play little, little games and then after that they say you like, how heavy is your brain? What's your brain weight? And this is like, here's the name again. And for example, this is very really interesting, like how they refer to my game and me, of course, because I want to be super smart, so I play and play and play and play. And then it tells me, okay, your, your brain weight is that, and if you score 121 um, gram more, then you beat your friends. And you are actually smarter than 13 of your friends. Yeah, this is another example. And then you challenge your real friends, yeah? Then I didn't got to like beat her, and then I can send her messages like, 
oh, uh, you're a cheater, I will get you next time, and stuff like that. And now another thing, how I think identity is used by games. I have my garden, you know? Okay, it's not mine, it's Stephanie's. But um, I can visit my garden, I can just go over and visit my friend's gardens and check them out. And actually I build a garden, so I plant here, I plant, this is, these are actually um, uh, Lego blocks, um, and I, I build, like, grow Lego trees, and um, that's how I, I can myself um, design this garden or create this garden, and they really look different. But we come to that later. This is like Jan's garden. This is like okay, I could put a like a football uh, a football field in it or uh, stuff like that. And they really address me, the games. This is the newest game you may uh, you might heard about it. This is um, Cityville uh, by Zinger, and they call to just make build the city of your dreams. And then the city looks like this, for example. This is actually I think that's my city. Yeah, it is. Um, and cities can look quite differently. People can have skyscrapers and stuff like that. So I somehow put ideas of myself into this city. This is an another city. And they call even my, this is an interesting thing. Um, my toy store there is called Zena's Toy Store. So they use the data, they use my name um, to, to to, to, to refer to me and to make to involve me into the game. I actually become this product as well while I play it. And then I can accept the help of my friends and actually the, he, he with his pictures running around in my city and bringing tourists to it. So that's, I think that's interesting. Um, and I think each product, each marketing expert tries to build up by an identification with the product. But social games, um, could, you could call them like as, of course, social networks. Um, they are, you become the product, as I said before. Um, you are kind of your social <laughs> profile, You're, you are your social, um, your Facebook profile, and you are your city as well. You may become your, like your garden or your city. Um, but now I like to connect these um, two things, these aspect identity and the aspect gaming um, in a digital world to summarize my point. Identification is a construct built, but it's a very, 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 very powerful concept. And we haven't talked about that today, I think. Actually, wars are declared on the concept of identity, on a concept of collective identity. Because, for example, I myself see myself as a Muslim or as a German, or as whatever, I may feel empowered to kill you because you're Jewish. That's a part of identity we haven't talked about. This is the power of collective identity. And I might will not kill you because you're on Facebook. So that's what we all hope, that we become bigger and building up bigger collective identities, what actually help us to, to become like one, spe one species and not like, like see someone as an enemy just because we think he is something else. Um, so um, I think this is a really powerful concept, this concept of, of identity. And um, on the other hand, we also know that even if we, we know that identity is a construct, construction, and we heard that before, it's not real. Um, I have my hand and I don't know which one is mine. Um, and even if we try to overcome concept, overcome the idea about what we are, it's really hard. It's really hard not to like um, judge someone or just to, to, to orientate yourself. You always use uh, what you think or believe you are um, when you interact with others. Um, and we use everything what we can get um, to, for identification. We use grades, we use our mirror images, we use payrolls, we use these words below our name on our business cards, this numerics dis displayed on, by our scale in the morning. <laughs> and this 
new thing, Facebook. Facebook, I think, actually brings together all the available data, or at least it tries to bring together all the available data um, about ourselves at one place. We could say that's awesome, and I think it is awesome. Instead of checking the mirror in the morning, I just check my profile pic. It's better. <laughs> On the other side, it's horrible. I never felt so visible, never so one person, never so regular, never so reduced. And I was never so stressed, <laughs> never so stressed by my friend's spelling mistakes on my wall, what is actually my new digital skin, um, what is like my digital clothes, if we refer to our Facebook profile as our identity. And some, yeah, it feels like that sometimes. Um, and that's why I think my Facebook profile will of course never be able to represent me as a, but it does in a way, because it's my digital identity. But making something visible always means not, not only reducing something, it means also making something comparable. And so our Facebook identities become, com so through Facebook our identities become comparable. And that's social stress. And uh, I think that's what, what we heard, hear about really often, that, um, Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, what we hear about really often is that we are stressed by all the information we get. We are stressed by, by all the social stress in Facebook. And so that's why I think um, I think um, if we compare us, we are there on Facebook. Um, and I think Social gaming and gaming as all is a natural reaction to what to this overwhelming situation because within our te technological or um, identity we are just children we are three four years old we're just getting started we we don't know us we don't know our digital identity so that's why I think um, this social gaming is a learning process for us to handle happening with our self-construction. What is happening to that? So we just learn it to our stand ourselves, to our stand this digital us, this digital me, this digital I, this digital myself. And gaming and playing is what I do if, if I try to handle an overwhelming challenge. That's why children play. They discover, they discover their body, their surrounding, their selves, their experiences, everything highly efficient by just playing. And that's what's happening if we play. If we stop just to be our self Facebook identity, that's what's happening when we transform our regulated Facebook identities into a gameplay. And I think it's a learning process. And I'm very curious what kind of games we will design and what games we will play with each other. I'm very curious what will happen if games become more and more social and more and more integrated in our real life experience. And if we actually design new games, I probably couldn't solve the typical controversial about identity, which we have heard about today a lot as well. Is our identity something fixed? We are somehow ruled by it. Um, can we either be an investment banker or, an, or a communist? Can we even be more? Um, I think the old concept of identity Maybe something what is, is maybe something what is existing and will be overcome at one point. Was identity this special type of self-awareness as a fixed identity, not as a moving one? Because I think it's moving more and more, and that's what the techn technological change will bring. Um, is it maybe was it just a step of evolution in, in humankind? Um, I have the hope that games may help us to get rid of these fixed identifications and make it easier for us to like become someone else and just to play different worlds whenever, like take it easy and play something. And yes, 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 I hope that it leads to a more playful world and a more peaceful world. And I thank you very much for your attention and your time. <laughs>